This is the ROS chip and a ROS PC board, ROS standing for the Robot Basic Robot Operating System. Using this board and chip, you can create a robot very easily using almost any sensors or any motors that you'd like to use. We're going to demonstrate how this board works with the simulation and how it works with a real robot in a very simple task. Let's start by looking at the board itself. This is the ROS PC board. Right here in the center is the ROS chip, the Robot Basic Robot Operating System chip. It communicates with this Bluetooth transceiver with Robot Basic in the PC. There's a small speaker back here to provide some audio tones and simple music if you wish to play them through your robot. This board supports many types of motors and sensors. You can, for example, connect up small DC motors, one motor here and one motor here, and those are driven by the board itself. There are two sockets, male sockets right here. Those are used if your robot uses continuous rotation servo motors. There are a number of sensors around the outside here. In this case, we're using some ultrasonic sensors. You can also use ping ultrasonics. Uh, all of these sensors will plug directly into the board, makes it very easy. There's no cables are required. You can also use some digital infrared sensors. They also plug directly in the board, the ones from Pololu. All this is explained in detail in the manual. You can also use analog infrared signals sensors. Those, because they do not have a, a pinout like pings and some of these other sensors, those have to be plugged into these sockets with a small cable that can allow those to be mounted on your robot wherever you wish. There's also a beacon sensor here at the front. The beacon sensor allows you to detect beacons. Uh, again, it's explained in the manual how to build those beacons. This is a compass. It's mounted above so that there won't be any magnetic fields or uh, metal from the different devices. Uh, if you're using digital sensors, for example, you can mount the compass directly into the sockets below. This small cable comes over here and plugs into a voltage divider by these two resistors. It allows you to monitor the battery voltage so that you know when to recharge your, your robot. This is the on-off switch. And although typically we recommend just leaving this in the on position, and then running the cables for the battery here through a external switch. Uh, in many cases though, this switch is all you need and it's there for your convenience so you have the option. The robot also supports, the ROS also supports three line sensors. Those are plugged in back here. And it supports uh, a variety of, of sensors as we've said and they're all explained in the manual. The ROS PC board will mount directly on our RB9 chassis. So let's take a look at that. This is the RB9 chassis. It's very strong. It has five supports. It's nine inches in diameter. And the ROS PC board that we just looked at sits in the center between these two systems, allowing the sensors to see above the wheels and yet low enough that they're not interfered with the top of the chassis. The top is completely free. You can mount other microprocessors uh, such as an Arduino, Arduino processor, there are holes here for that, or for um, a basic stamp, or um, 
other types of, of boards that you may wish to mount on the top, or you could mount a small robot arm. Uh, it's completely clean on the top, makes it easy to do any of those things. The PC board, as I said, mounts here and everything connects. We've got the motors connecting here in the back. Um, we didn't mention before that, that the PC board also supports uh, wheel encoders. These particular motors also have integrated wheel encoders and those plug into the PC board so that the system will automatically uh, count those and allow it to make uh, more accurate turns and accurate distance movements and so on. The wheels have uh, good traction. There's plenty of room for a large battery, although if you wish to have lighter weight, you can use a, a smaller battery. Remember, all the details can be found in the Ross Manual, which is a free download from robotbasic.org. Uh, we did mention before that you're going to have line sensors. There are slots in the front here, so you can mount the line sensors uh, wherever you wish and, and then connect those back up to the, to the PC board. I want to start by showing you a simulation of what we're going to do with a real robot. You see here in the center we have the little simulated robot basic robot and we have some objects. We have two small objects that are close by as well as a large object that's close by and a larger object that's further away. In this simulation the robot's going to start by facing north so it's going to turn directly north directly straight up and then it's going to turn around using its distance measuring sensors to measure the beginning and the end of each object and in doing so it determines the span that the object is as it makes its turn. Objects that are far away are ignored, objects that are close are measured and when it finds a large enough object which will be this one it'll back up halfway and move to the object. So let's start by watching this program run and after that we will I'll go back and look at the program and then look at a real robot performing this action. It's moving north. Then as it begins to turn to the to the right, it stops each time it gets to the edge of an object. Ignore this one completely, found this one. It's going to stop when it faces this object. Then again over here, then turn back halfway and move to the object. Let's now take a look at that program. Shown here is the heart of the program. You can download the entire program from robotbasic.org. It starts off with the variable real set to false. In that case, the simulation will run. When we change real to true, this very same program will control a real robot that will perform the same actions. Let's look at how this program works very briefly before we go to the real robot. We have an initialization routine first that sets up everything as necessary. If you want to calibrate the compass, you would uncomment this next line. Then we do a subroutine that faces the robot to the north, and then a repeat until done loop causes the robot to keep moving until it finds a large object. The first repeat until loop repeats until it sees an object that's close within 150 pixels. The range for the real robot is also calibrated into pixels because the robot that we see on the screen is 40 pixels in diameter. So since our main robot or real robot is 9 inches in diameter if we see an object within 9 inches, it will also say that it's within 40 pixels. So everything becomes compatible. So it turns until it sees an object, delays, and then it records the compass reading. Then it turns again until it does not see the object, until the range is greater than the 150, in which case then it, it records, it delays and records the compass again. And then it records the difference in that those two angles, which basically lets it determine the span that that object made. The larger the span, the larger the object. 
If it's larger than 45 degrees, in this case, then we will automatically move back to the object and we move back to whatever that span was divided by 2 and then we move to the object. A more complete explanation is in Appendix F of the Ross Manual. So you may want to download that and get a complete explanation of this program, including all the subroutines that go with it. For now, we're going to change real to true instead of false. And then we'll rerun the program and watch the real robot perform the exact same actions as our simulation. Here we have the RB9 robot and a box. That box is the larger object that we're going to try to find. We have smaller objects, some glue here, some other objects, large objects like the briefcase that are a little out of range. And so it should ignore those other objects and find the box. When we run the program, the first thing the robot will do is turn north. Oscillates a little, finds the north. Then as it turns, it finds the glue, the end of the glue. Turns on around, found my feet. Found the edge of the box and the other edge of the box. Turned back halfway and moved to the box. The important thing here is the Robot Basic operating system, along with Robot Basic, allows you to build a robot easier than any other way. And once you build it, you can control the robot immediately with high-level commands from Robot Basic in a running in a PC. You can even develop all your programs first with the simulation and then change one line. And then the very same program will now control a real robot. You can use our RB9 chassis or you can build your own. Full information about everything is available at robotbasic.org. Go there, go to the ROS tab, and you can download the complete Robot Basic Robot Operating System Manual and see if it's what would work for you. This arrangement is actually perfect for schools because instead of a school having to buy dozens of robots, they can buy one robot, maybe one for the whole school, let each of the students download their free copy of Robot Basic, prepare their programs, and when the one student gets it ready, the teacher simply plugs in a Bluetooth adapter and that student's program can now control the real robot. Everyone gets to have their own robot and everyone gets to use the real one. It's a perfect solution and very economical.